Francis Hogan told MPs this week that your company is unquestionably making hate worse. Is this true? What's your response? Yeah, good morning, Vanessa, and thanks for having me. Uh, uh, the answer is uh, categorically, that's not true. Uh, in fact, if you look at the investments that we've made over the last few years on safety and integrity, uh, uh, we've actually invested more than $13 billion, $5 billion in this year alone. And we have 40,000 people focused wholly on safety and integrity at Beta that would strongly disagree with that claim. But perhaps let me put some numbers behind that as well. What that means is in some of the most challenging areas like hate speech, because we're dealing with the nuances of language, we've seen the prevalence of hate speech on Facebook uh, declined by three quarters over the last two years. So it's a fraction of a fraction of a percent, still more than we want, but we're definitely seeing progress there. And uh, you know, certainly as we think about what the next iteration of technology looks like, taking those technologies that put safety and integrity in the heart are really important as we build out the metaverse. And she touched on safety for children. She said, I'm deeply worried that it may not be possible to make Instagram safe for a 14-year-old, and I sincerely doubt that it is possible to make it safe for a 10-year-old. Can you assure parents that your social media services are safe for children? Yes, I mean, I mean, just for the record here, you know, our services are for people that are 13 and above. And you know, we take tra tra tremendous care in making sure that teenagers, well, all users, but teenagers in particular, and we have special features to protect teens. So, you know, just for example, we just recently announced a, a new feature where if you are over 18, you cannot now direct message somebody on Instagram who's under 18, that, that if they're not following you. So that means mom and dad or grandma or whoever, if, you follow, if that teenager has chosen to, that they'll be able to follow, you can message but strangers can't. And that's just one example of all the work that we're doing every single day. And a lot of the research that, 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 that's out there actually says that, on, 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 that for teenagers, Instagram is positive to neutral in terms, of, in terms of its impact. But even if there's a single degree of kind of negative, we want to work really hard. And that's why we do that research to, uh, to make sure that we're making any changes that we can. And when we look to the future of, of technology and where it's going, and these, these questions are really important. And it's why we're building the metaverse really slowly. So we announced uh, our contribution there last night. I mean, just to be clear, I mean, the metaverse is going to happen whether Facebook is involved or not. Just like the internet, it's going to take many companies, many organizations, many entrepreneurs and individuals. And, and if the, at the heart of this, if we think about uh, where we've been over the last couple of years, the pandemic has underscored, even if we needed it, just the importance of being in close contact with people in real life. But when that isn't possible, what technology has enabled us to do is have some form of online presence. And that's moved from how the technology has moved from being about accessing the internet through, through typing, through words, which is you know, probably a bit clumsy and if you're dyslexic like me, a bit awkward, to movies, to videos, to this next step where it's a much more immersive experience, where we have that sense of what's called presence. And that's got a hard thing to describe, but I think we know it when we feel it, uh, when you're that, that close. And that's what these new technologies are gonna do. And they're gonna create, and already creating, really interesting new ways. So whether that's school children putting a bit of their class time aside, not just to read about the, uh, the streets of ancient Rome, but be there. Uh, whether that's surgeons coming together as they do now in virtual reality to practice their expertise. Or if you're a bit like me, uh, you're excited about the ABBA global tour that's going to come from the Olympic Park in London next year. So all of these things are in a way giving us glimpses of what this technology is going to enable. Well, talking about the pandemic, will you apologise for allowing vaccine and coronavirus misinformation on your platform? Well, we've worked on an almost daily basis since it'd be very much the beginning uh, of the pandemic with the WHO, and in this country and, and health services and authorities around the world, the, the NHS in this country in particular. And what that's meant is we've removed tens of millions of pieces of harmful content. We've dramatically uh, reduced uh, hundreds of millions of pieces of content. And importantly, we've made sure that we're directing people to the right and credible, accurate information. In fact, over 2 billion people have been directed to accurate information the WHO and, 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 uh, uh, and other services like the NHS by us. So it was a really big responsibility to make sure that we've been getting this right. And all of the work we've been doing is being led by the experts. Um, that work is continuing. You know, I think we know that we are, we, are, we are not finished here yet. We're going to make sure that we're doing everything that we possibly can. 
And that name change, Meta, what's the point of it? What are you hoping to achieve by that? Well, the name change in of itself um, is to, to, to do two things. Uh, one, which is to set out this longer term vision for the metaverse, as, as, as I outlined. And, uh, and, and the second part of that is just to bring more clarity to, to our organization. You know, right now, it's probably an important thing to say to all of the viewers that the, the apps that Facebook, the company, now Meta, the company, so Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, and others that people use every day, they're not changing at all. It is about our company and setting out that five, 10, 15 year vision for these new technologies that we think will put connection and contact and what's called presence right at the heart of the evolution of technology. And you now it's incredible. This might, some of this stuff might sound like science fiction right now, but it's quite incredible just how quickly technology can evolve and how quickly we get used to things. So even something like video calling, which, you know, when I was a younger, you know, that would really be the subject of science fiction. And now it's something that, you know, so many people do on every single day. And that's, you know, actually a good indicator of just how much we uh, can see this progress happening and how we're going to be excited about building this next level of what the internet is going to look like from based in our desktops, which, you know, I'm using that right now to, to, to do the Zoom call. Then it moved on to our phones. Now it's going to move into a way where instead of looking at the internet, we get a chance to be involved in it and participate in a way that could be video calling with my mum next to me through augmented glasses. Or, you know, it could be, as I said before, brilliant educational benefits or brilliant entertainment benefits.